Hello explorers and welcome to another video. Today we are going to look into Ceph FS and what is actually needed in order to store data. And during the conference, Cephalacon that I went to, we had a discussion if you could store data, read data in a cluster that was heavily um, diverse and had data in different locations and the latency might be bad and so on. So I was thinking, what if I had a cluster and I turned off some of the OSDs, how much could it actually handle and when does it, doesn't it allow it me to read and write anymore? So I wanted to do an experiment with that. So I've created here a bunch of random files. So if we transition over here, I have five random files with just random data in order to be sure that I'm storing something to the Ceph cluster. And if we open up my uh, command line tool here uh, to copy data, let's see, there we go. And we go to slash CephFS. So this is a file system, CephFS, and I can of course store data to it. No problem. It should just work when I have everything up and running. And currently I have four hosts running. And if I go into host four here and do a sudo ceph status, and we should be able to see that everything is up and running. We have four OSDs up and running. Everything is just fine. We have a quorum here of the uh, monitors. So let's say that I turn one off. So we stop this OSD here. So now I only have three OSDs. Um, and the, the reason is that I, I should be able to store data then as well. It shouldn't be any problems because I have three copies. I have a minimum requirement of two, so I should be able to store data even if one is gone. So let's go in on to three here and do the same here. And I also want to set uh, no rebalance and no out in order to be able to know that no data is moving around. Uh, so that could be good to have as well. So let's stop this OSD as well. So now I, if I do sudo ceph status, I should have only two OSDs up and running as we see here. We have a bunch of data objects de degraded, and, but we, it's undersized and, and so on. And if I try to store now, we see that it stalls. I can't store more data. I only have two OSDs up and I need to have at least two copies and it's not able to actually store more data then. So let's go over here and set the min size of one for the metadata and the min size of one for the data pool. And if we go back then, we see that we can write data again. So if we have two OSDs up and running and we only need one copy, we are actually able to store data. So that's good. Let's go into number two here and see if we can stop the last service here. So now we should have a situation, if we look at the status, that we only have one OSD up and running. We only require one copy of data to be stored and I'm not sure that we actually can do that. Yeah, it seems that we can actually write one copy, even though we only have one OSD, it goes slower, but it's able to write even though we only have one OSD up and running. So in the case of the requirement of one copy stored before you actually uh, are done with the write, you only need to have one OSD up and running and or available on the network anywhere. And then when any other it comes up online or if you have latency issues, it will propagate over to the other ones and actually create three copies for you. 
So the requirement is only to have one copy and you should have three copies when everything is up and running. So uh, that is good that we can actually write data even though we have a cluster that has some problems. Uh, so let's start up these services again. Um, start up the fourth one. And I also want to re restore the um, min size and max size. So the cluster is standard again. And then I want to look at the other case. What, what can we do with the reading? So if you look at Ceph status here, uh, everything should be up and running. We have four OSDs up and running, but we have a couple of objects that are degraded because we have only written to one OSD. So it needs to do a bunch of recovering, moving data over. Uh, so did I do an unset of those? We do an unset of rebalance, unset of no outs. Then we sh should see a bunch of data uh, movement here. So um, I'll wait for that to become a healthy uh, cluster again, and then we will continue. And I'm back, and now I have a healthy cluster. Everything is up and running again. And now we try the other way around. We want to copy files. So let's see here. We start just copy the first file here. Should be just fine. The cluster is up and running. Everything is just fine. So it should just work. And uh, if we go into host four here and we stop that service, then we remove 25% of the cluster and we should have three different copies. So it should be just fine to read another file. And it works just fine here. And if we go into host three, and then we we can set no, re, uh, set no rebalance and no out again, in order to ensure that we don't have a, uh, a lot of data moving around in our cluster. Um, and then we will uh, stop this host as well. So now we should only have two OSDs up and running. We can see they here, two OSDs down. So that is an issue of course. And let's try to copy another file. Now we see that it locks up. And the reason is that it can't ensure data security because there isn't a um, security of three copy or two copies available. It can't ensure that. Um, so what we can do here is actually go in and again, set the min size to one for the metadata pool and a min size of one for the data pool. And if we do that, we can see that the copy starts again. So now we only require there to be one data one piece of data in our cluster for it to be a secure uh, read or write. So um, let's then go into the second host here and stop that service as well and then try to copy a file. So if we do that we can see that it can copy some of the data and then it stops. And the reason for this is that we have four different hosts. We say that we want to keep three copies of it. That means that we have 25% on each host that we could store these data objects in. So we have only one host here. So that there is a very high likelihood that are not all of the object has one copy on the that host. It's pretty much a secure uh, total um, clarity that that host should be missing some objects. And we can see here that this specific object that we try to copy here was missing on this host, which means that we can't copy the file. But we at least know now that if we set the min size of our cluster to one, 
we only require one copy of the data to be available for read and write in order to secure our uh, data transfers and the cluster will work against or trying to create three copies of the data to ensure data integrity in our cluster. So if we want to be really safe, we can set that value to two, but that requires us to always have two copies of the data written before we say that the data is safe and can be used. And we need to have two copies of the data before we actually allow any read of that data. So I hope that you found this interesting. I hope that you learned something today. I thought this ex example and this uh, experiment was really um, enlightening for me. Uh, but now that I'm gonna look at other ways of setting up a cluster and moving it into data centers and so on. Uh, if you like this video, give it a like, share it with your friends and colleagues. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. If you have any comments or suggestions or thoughts around this example, please leave a comment in the comment section down below. And I really hope to see you in the next video.